welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I'm having a look at Apathy, which is by Skylar, who brought us fabulous products like Luminar Neo, and I was lucky enough to get a beta test to have a look at. So I've loaded up some a couple of different folders, and it's really easy. Let's just have a sort of quick look around. So you've got all your different um, you can add images export install plugins so you can use it is as a plugin for Lightroom and Photoshop you've got your standard control redo you can flip rotate flag images you can zoom in zoom out fit screen do comparisons all your stuff is there in your file structure if you want to add a new folder of images just simply click on here and you go create project and each of the folders they've actually called a project so you can then click on that and you can give it a project name or if you want to add more images to it you can add a folder or single images super easy you can if you want to like I said add a folder add an image so you can add different folders to different projects if you wanted to or add individual images there is also a arrays tool up here so that's arrays and clone so if you want to get rid of certain artifacts or whatever out of your image that's there as well and then there is also the masking feature but let's move on up here it'll give you your XF data so on this image it was ISO 640 shot at 70 mil f 2.8 and the shutter speed was 1 8,000th of a second because <laughs> we had been quite dark and then all of a sudden the, the Sun come out so what do you do uh, so if we come over to the essentials panel let's just fold all this up so this is pretty easy you've got your presets that you can apply there if you have any particular presets that you want to install or you can click on to masking you've also got your crop tool which is here pretty easy if you've been using Luminar a lot of this will look second nature I mean it's just normal you've then got your essentials panel which is where I was in before and then you have all the cool stuff which is all new so there's the retouch panel and there's the reshape panel and then there's also some creative effects as well as undo options so let's just go over to the essentials panel and we'll have a little bit of a look develop and this is develop raw i shoot in raw all the time so you can change your camera profiles if you are using a particular profile in your camera so for instance on my sony a7r5 i frequently shoot in black and white i can set that profile up you can of course just use the standard or you can use adobe standard it's up to you which you want to whichever you want to use I have put in the Adobe standard and it has automatically selected my camera you've got your white balance that's pretty normal you can change all that your exposure highlights contrast again if you are a Lumina user this will all be fairly standard even if you've been using Lightroom or Photoshop or anything else, I'm sure a lot of this will be fairly standard. You've got curves, you've got your RGB, then you have color, so you can play with vibrance, saturation, removing color cast, you've got your whole HSL list there. If you want to work in black and white, you can convert it to black and white and you can still edit the luminance and saturation. So you can play with all of that then you have sharpen let me just close a few of these because it's starting to stretch it out a bit so you have sharpen then you have details structure and noise reduction but 
that's not really why we're here. Good to have them. Apity is a software program for portraits. That's pretty much all it was designed for. It's not designed for landscapes or anything else. It's purely there for portraits. If you want to do landscapes or still life or product photography, Luminar Neo is still there and still a great product to use. But if you are using Luminar Neo for portraits, you may find that the retouching panel and the creative panel might perhaps just be a little bit limiting. So the lovely people at Skylum brought out Aperti. So this is an image that I have already put through its paces. I'm just going to show you the before and after. Okay, so here is the before and after. So this is the photo straight out of camera. This is Eliza. This is the before image of Eliza. It's just processing and because I'm recording videos at the same time, it's just a little bit slow. So sorry about that. So this is the image. There's some flyaways and there's a couple of blemishes and some marks and things like that. So I ran it through Aperti and I must say I'm pretty happy with the results there. So how did I get to that? So let's go find another image. So this is another image of Eliza. I'm just going to maybe down to 25%. So she's got a few little blemishes and things like that that need to be fixed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to the retouch panel and have a little look at what we've got. So people, I'm not sure what that is. It's just got coming soon. So in the beta version i believe not everything is up and running and even the early version i think there's still some stuff to load up but once you have got your copy that will come in updates which will happen fairly soon i believe so just in the skin retouching area i've got blemish removal so i can come through and apply that and i can put that up as far as i like and it has done a pretty good job of removing all those blemishes. Let me just put the before and after up again. So that's before and that's after. Hasn't gotten rid of everything, but it has got rid of quite a lot. If you're playing with freckles, which she doesn't have, you can keep that. You can keep the details. Now there is also a skin smoothing. So what this will do is it will smooth out the skin. Now if you go too far, then obviously it is going to be a little on the plastic side. So that's before and that's after. But what you need to do is use some common sense judgment and work out what actually still looks natural and what doesn't then you have got and you can keep details like the skin pores and things like that or you can drop the detail amount down so that's before and that's after so come a long way from removing all the blemishes and softening off the skin and there's still a little bit to fix, but let's face it, not a lot. So then there's face skin color correction. So you can use that to sort of balance out the skin tones throughout the face. Dark circles. Now, she hasn't really got panda eyes as such, but they are a little bit dark because she was sort of under a tree which is giving some shadows so I can bring up this dark circle removal and it will remove that dark circle that was under the eye so and the more you move that up the more it will give you 
so there you go so that brings it up a little bit more then there's also face brighten which will brighten up the face in a darker area so again she was in shadow and there's also shine removal now i don't really have any shine on eliza's face here in some of the other images where she was in more sun there was more shine to be removed so that's quite handy to have as well then you have got eyes so this was always a fun one that you could play with from luminar neo you can change the color of the eyes so if you want her to have blue eyes or green eyes or something like that you can play around with it or of course you can set it to original iris then there is iris flare so you can change and i'm hoping you can see that there is the catch lights in the bottom of the eye you don't want it too much but just a little bit then you've got redness removal well I really don't have that there is eye whitening so this will whiten up the white part of the eye and you've got eye enhancement which will sharpen them and make them stand out a little more so that is before and that is after so there's still a couple of things we want to get rid of but we can work on that you've then got mouth which has got teeth whitening and teeth brightening don't really have any teeth in this shot so don't need that then there is also let me just close some of these you've also got makeup so you can come in and you can add a little bit of blush to cheeks or cheeks and nose and I believe this is quite subtle the way that it applies it obviously you would have to be careful with how much you apply you can also change the tone of that as well the width the height the X and Y axis you can play with contour so the amount of contour that you're adding you can feather it highlights if you wish to add some highlights to the face you can and of course you can feather that off then you have things like eyeliner which you can put on let's just have a little play with that you can change the hue of the eyeliner I believe interesting you can add a little bit of glow there's eyebrow enhancement so if you just need to fix up the eyebrows a little bit and we could do with a little bit of help there again just takes a second I don't know that it did just made them stand out a little more I think didn't really do that much then you've got lips so you can play with saturation you can play with tone and you can play with darkening there is also body skin so if we just zoom out oh, let's go the other way fit to screen so I can do skin smoothing as well there is actually a couple even though her hands blurred there are some scratches on her hand that you can see there so hopefully that will sort of get rid of that you I might just I don't know if it's going to get rid of that as such we may have to go back in with the clone tool and fix that up then we also have details for the body so you can play with that and you've got body skin color correction so if you've got someone who's put a little bit too much foundation or the foundation doesn't match their actual skin color you frequently have the face is one color and the body is another color so hopefully by using the body skin color correction you can fix that so that is all there in the retouch panel so you've got skin eyes mouth makeup that you can play with so these are things that you could not play with before in luminar neo for instance apity recognizes 4000 key focal points whereas luminar neo only recognize 
I think it was 34 or is it 42? I could be wrong there. Um, and you can do group edit or a single subject as well. So if you've got more than one person in your photo, this is going to work for a group of people or just a single subject. But there's lots that you can do with it. The makeup touch-ups, that's completely new to Appity. I mean, it's just tailored specifically for portrait photographers, as you can see here. And it's all completely non-destructive as well. So you can come back in and you can re-edit and fix things so there is also a shape so if you want to come in again people is not working there so you can slim the face down if you want to if you go into eyes you can change the shape of the eyes the arch of the eyebrows the eyebrow position the distance of the eyebrows you can play with the nose so you've got the shape of the bridge nose the nose tip you can move it up and down again you've got mouth so same again lips position upper lip shape lower lip shape etc etc and then you have body so you can change the body shape or you can change the abdomen in your image and I might see if I can find another photo to have a little look at that. Okay, so I grabbed another image just so that I can show you the body shaping. So look, personally, I wasn't a huge fan of this, but I guess it's all a matter of how much you use it or how much you don't. If I was to come in and do a before and after. So that's the before and that's after so I mean it has thinned her out not that she was needed thinning out but I just wanted to show you so if you were just doing a touch then I guess that could probably be okay but it needs to be used I guess in moderation okay so let's go back to the previous image that we were working on and I'm just going to go in a little bit and I want to go through, now that I've pretty much run through all of that, I want to show you what you can still do to get rid of anything else. If there's flyaway hairs or some blemishes or things that you didn't get rid of when using the retouch tool. So you have got the erase tool or the clone tool. Uh, the erase tool you can just come in and you can go over an area and you can either have it remove after each stroke and turn that on or you can turn that off and you can do a few bits and then you hit erase so it's up to you which way you want to go so I actually found that the clone tool did a better job a lot of the time than the erase tool so you do need to select a source and you'll get prompted for that and then you can change the size the softness and you can tap it in like so if you want to do more you can just come in and you can work your way through getting rid of i do recommend going in sort of a little bit closer if you can just makes it a little bit easier just click alt to select where you want your image to sample from I do recommend getting in as close as you can whether you're using the erase tool or the clone stamp tool and just so that you can see what you're working on a little bit better it's still processing this image so I'm not sure if this is going to work but I'm going to use alt to select where I want it to sample from and then I'm going to hover over the area. Obviously if I wasn't recording and using so much stuff it would probably work a little bit better. Let's just give it a minute and see if it will fix that up. So there we go. So it's gotten rid of a few other little areas as well. It has removed and this is something I don't know whether it's a glitch or but it seems to, anything that was applied in the retouch panel seems to have disappeared. But it will come back once you've saved it and gone back into your edit, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to click save and it will save those and add them to my edits. What else can I tell you about Aperti? Well, 
Skylum has is just releasing this very very shortly there's special prices that are coming out with it Skylum itself is just celebrated 16 years in September so they've been around for quite a while they were the first program to come out with sky replacement and using AI and things like that Skylum promises Abity is going to be quick and accessible it's going to give you natural looking results with speed and using AI it's going to automate and batch editing on your devices so it's not in the cloud it's on your devices so you, that's going to ensure you're going to have privacy it also means that you can work from anywhere and give you full control over your libraries as i said before it can recognize 4,000 key focal points whereas the previous software only did like 30 or 40. you can do group shots or you can do a single subject it's standalone or you can use it as a plugin for Lightroom, Photoshop and all the rest of it. It's also as an external editor in Capture One. The blemish removal and the skin smoothing is really cool feature. I mean, what would have taken half an hour or so to do, you can clean up most of it in just a couple of clicks and then that leaves only a little bit to go in and retouch. So it does make it heaps easier the makeup touch-ups is awesome if you go to the creative edits which I haven't even looked at there are lighting sources so you can actually put in where you want your lighting to be there you can bring it in and you can put in the amount of light you want you can change the color of the light you want you can change the glow if you go into light optimization you can actually choose from which direction the light is coming whether you want to have any texture in there so there's you could have a monstera or a palm leaf or you can have anything like that there is also um, strips so you could uh, patterns so you could have strips or dots or you could have none and just stick it with the these are really cool actually and you can hover over them and you can see what you're getting so I like the shutters tree shadow vintage windows so there's a lot in there that you can play with as well so they're pretty cool then you've got the portrait bokeh that you can put in so you can have the amount of bokeh in the background you can change your background so if you want your background to be brighter or darker you can add highlight glows there are lookup tables so you can go through it's limited but you if you've got your own lookup tables you can add your custom or you can click on get more and go to Skylum and you can get them from there you can add film grain you can add vignettes just your standard black and white vignettes and you can also add some high key so your vignettes so if you want to add a white vignette or a black vignette you can do that you've got other things that you can go in there there's advanced settings for your vignette so you can play with the roundness the feather and then you have your high key at the bottom so if i just turn that off and you can see it before or after the effect or you can undo it from there so you can add high key in there and you can add amount of high key you want to put in there the standard high key you can play around with glow contrast color etc so there's so much that Apity has on offer the price will be $249 US or 219 euro for the lifetime access that's for the early subscription deal or there is a yearly subscription where at the moment if you order before November 7th it's US 199 or 179 euro and you get a year for free if you order after November 7th it will cost you US 299 a year but that does give you two licenses there is no free trial however there is a 14 day money back guarantee so if you buy it and you really don't like it you can get your money back guarantee and what more can you ask from that 
So it is completely tailored for portrait photographers. Like I said, it did a beautiful job. I was really quite happy with the before and after that I was getting just on simple edits for portraits where you just need to do a little bit of cleanup and things like that. Obviously, if you want to do really elaborate composites and things like that, you can open this from Photoshop and you can do all your retouching quickly, easily, and then bring it back into Photoshop and you can continue to work on it if you want to do something more elaborate than just a basic touch-up. But if all you do is just basic touch-ups on your images or you pay to get it outsourced, then using Aperty might just be the product that you're looking so for. So this is the before and after or the comparison and this is the final image that I edited. The other thing I forgot to mention is you can copy and edit and you can paste it to all the other images within that folder so that's pretty easy to batch edit your images. Exporting it's just a matter of clicking export or going over to your file. You can save where you want to copy it to, you can save the file name, the format, whether you want sharpening, the actual size, your color space. You can do all of that. You can put compression onto it. You can save it as the resolution. Normal standard things that, that you would expect in a Skyland product, very similar to the way that Luminar Neo works as well as a lot of other software products as well. So that's it for me with Appity. I hope you like this little preview. It's a great product if you're really into portrait retouching and you just want a simplified process, then maybe check out Appity. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that little bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time on YouTube. Bye for now.